Ezekiel. Chapter 1. In the thirtieth year, in the fourth month, on the fifth day, while I was among the exiles by the Kibar River, the heavens were opened, and I saw visions of God. On the fifth of the month, it was the fifth year of the exile of King Jehoiakim. The word of the Lord came to Ezekiel the priest, the son of Beuzi, by the Kibar River in the land of the Babylonians. There the hand of the Lord was upon him. I looked, and I saw a windstorm coming out of the north, an immense cloud with flashing lightning and surrounded by brilliant light. The center of the fire looked like glowing metal, and in the fire was what looked like four living creatures. In appearance, their form was that of a man, but each of them had four faces and four wings. Their legs were straight. Their feet were like those of a calf and gleamed like burnished bronze. Under their wings, on their four sides, they had the hands of a man. All four of them had faces and wings, and their wings touched one another. Each one went straight ahead. They did not turn as they moved. Their faces looked like this. Each of the four had the face of a man, and on the right side each had the face of a lion, and on the left the face of an ox. Each also had the face of an eagle. Such were their faces. Their wings were spread out upward. Each had two wings, one touching the wing of another creature on either side, and two wings covering its body. Each one went straight ahead. Wherever the spirit would go, they would go, without turning as they went. The appearance of the living creatures was like burning coals of fire, or like torches. Fire moved back and forth among the creatures. It was bright, and lightning flashed out of it. The creatures sped back and forth like flashes of lightning. As I looked at the living creatures, I saw a wheel on the ground beside each creature with its four faces. This was the appearance and structure of the wheels. They sparkled like chrysolite, and all four looked alike. Each appeared to be made like a wheel intersecting a wheel. As they moved, they would go in any one of the four directions the creatures faced. The wheels did not turn about as the creatures went. Their rims were high and awesome, and all four rims were full of eyes all around. When the living creatures moved, the wheels beside them moved. And when the living creatures rose from the ground, the wheels also rose. Wherever the Spirit would go, they would go, and the wheels would rise along with them, because the Spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels. When the creatures moved, they also moved. When the creatures stood still, they also stood still. And when the creatures rose from the ground, the wheels rose along with them, because the Spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels. Spread out above the heads of the living creatures was what looked like an expanse, sparkling like ice and awesome. Under the expanse, their wings were stretched out one toward the other, and each had two wings covering its body. When the creatures moved, I heard the sound of their wings, like the roar of rushing waters, like the voice of the Almighty, like the tumult of an army. When they stood still, they lowered their wings. Then there came a voice from above the expanse over their heads as they stood with lowered wings. Above the expanse over their heads was what looked like a throne of sapphire, and high above on the throne was a figure like that of a man. I saw that from what appeared to be his waist up he looked like glowing metal, as if full of fire, and that from there down he looked like fire, and brilliant light surrounded him. Like the appearance of a rainbow in the clouds on a rainy day, so was the radiance around him. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. When I saw it, I fell face down, and I heard the voice of one speaking. Chapter 2 He said to me, Son of man, stand up on your feet, and I will speak to you. As he spoke, the Spirit came into me and raised me to my feet, and I heard him speaking to me. He said, Son of man, 
I am sending you to the Israelites, to a rebellious nation that has rebelled against me. They and their fathers have been in revolt against me to this very day. The people to whom I am sending you are obstinate and stubborn. Say to them, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. And whether they listen or fail to listen, for they are a rebellious house, they will know that a prophet has been among them. And you, son of man, do not be afraid of them or their words. Do not be afraid, though briars and thorns are all around you and you live among scorpions. Do not be afraid of what they say or terrified by them, though they are a rebellious house. You must speak my words to them, whether they listen or fail to listen, for they are rebellious. But you, son of man, listen to what I say to you. Do not rebel like that rebellious house. Open your mouth and eat what I give you. Then I looked, and I saw a hand stretched out to me. In it was a scroll, which he unrolled before me. On both sides of it were written words of lament and mourning and woe. Chapter 3 And he said to me, Son of man, eat what is before you. Eat this scroll. Then go and speak to the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he gave me the scroll to eat. Then he said to me, Son of man, eat this scroll I am giving you and fill your stomach with it. So I... I ate it, and it tasted as sweet as honey in my mouth. He then said to me, Son of man, go now to the house of Israel and speak my words to them. You are not being sent to a people of obscure speech and difficult language, but to the house of Israel, not to many peoples of obscure speech and difficult language whose words you cannot understand. Surely, if I had sent you to them, they would have listened to you. But the house of Israel is not willing to listen to you because they are not willing to listen to me. For the whole house of Israel is hardened and obstinate. But I will make you as unyielding and hardened as they are. I will make your forehead like the hardest stone, harder than flint. Do not be afraid of them or terrified by them, though they are a rebellious house. And he said to me, Son of man, listen carefully and take to heart all the words I speak to you. Go now to your countrymen in exile and speak to them. Say to them, This is what the Sovereign Lord says, whether they listen or fail to listen. Then the Spirit lifted me up, and I heard behind me a loud, rumbling sound. May the glory of the Lord be praised in his dwelling place. The sound of the wings of the living creatures brushing against each other and the sound of the wheels beside them, a loud, rumbling sound. The Spirit then lifted me up and took me away, and I went in bitterness and in the anger of my spirit with the strong hand of the Lord upon me. I came to the exiles who lived at Tel Aviv near the Kibar River, and there, where they were living, I sat among them for seven days, overwhelmed. At the end of seven days, the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. So hear the word I speak and give them warning from me. When I say to a wicked man, you will surely die, and you do not warn him or speak out to dissuade him from his evil ways in order to save his life, that wicked man will die for his sin, and I will hold you accountable for his blood. But if you do warn the wicked man, and he does not turn from his wickedness or from his evil ways, he will die for his sin, but you will have saved yourself. Again, when a righteous man turns from his righteousness and does evil, and I put a stumbling block before him, he will die. Since you did not warn him, he will die for his sin. The righteous things he did will not be remembered, and I will hold you accountable for his blood. But if you do warn the righteous man not to sin, and he does not sin, 
he will surely live because he took warning, and you will have saved yourself. The hand of the Lord was upon me there, and he said to me, Get up and go out to the plain, and there I will speak to you. So I got up and went out to the plain, and the glory of the Lord was standing there, like the glory I had seen by the Kibar River, and I fell face down. Then the Spirit came into me and raised me to my feet. He spoke to me and said, Go, shut yourself inside your house, and you, son of man, they will tie with ropes. You will be bound so that you cannot go out among the people. I will make your tongue stick to the roof of your mouth so that you will be silent and unable to rebuke them, though they are a rebellious house. But when I speak to you, I will open your mouth, and you shall say to them, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Whoever will listen, let him listen, and whoever will refuse, let him refuse, for they are a rebellious house. Chapter 4 Now, son of man, take a clay tablet, put it in front of you, and draw the city of Jerusalem on it. Then lay siege to it. Erect siege works against it. Build a ramp up to it. Set up camps against it and put battering rams around it. Then take an iron pan. Place it as an iron wall between you and the city and turn your face toward it. It will be under siege and you shall besiege it. This will be a sign to the house of Israel. Then Lie on your left side and put the sin of the house of Israel upon yourself. You are to bear their sin for the number of days you lie on your side. I have assigned you the same number of days as the years of their sin. So, for 390 days you will bear the sin of the house of Israel. After you have finished this, Lie down again, this time on your right side, and bear the sin of the house of Judah. I have assigned you forty days, a day for each year. Turn your face toward the siege of Jerusalem, and with bared arm prophesy against her. I will tie you up with ropes so that you cannot turn from one side to the other until you have finished the days of your siege. Take wheat and barley, beans and lentils, millet and spelt. Put them in a storage jar and use them to make bread for yourself. You are to eat it during the 390 days you lie on your side. Weigh out 20 shekels of food to eat each day and eat it at set times. Also measure out a sixth of a hin of water and drink it at set times. Eat the food as you would a barley cake Bake it in the sight of the people using human excrement for fuel. The Lord said, In this way the people of Israel will eat defiled food among the nations where I will drive them. Then I said, Not so, sovereign Lord. I have never defiled myself. From my youth until now, I have never eaten anything found dead or torn by wild animals. No unclean meat has ever entered my mouth. Very well, he said. I will let you bake your bread over cow manure instead of human excrement. He then said to me, Son of man, I will cut off the supply of food in Jerusalem. The people will eat rationed food in anxiety and drink rationed water in despair, for food and water will be scarce. They will be appalled at the sight of each other and will waste away because of their sin. Chapter 5 Now, son of man, take a sharp sword and use it as a barber's razor to shave your head and your beard. Then take a set of scales and divide up the hair. When the days of your siege come to an end, burn a third of the hair with fire inside the city. Take a third and strike it with the sword all around the city and scatter a third to the wind, or I will pursue them with drawn sword. But 
take a few strands of hair and tuck them away in the folds of your garment. Again, take a few of these and throw them into the fire and burn them up. A fire will spread from there to the whole house of Israel. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. This is Jerusalem, which I have set in the center of the nations with countries all around her, yet in her wickedness she has rebelled against my laws and decrees more than the nations and countries around her. She has rejected my laws and has not followed my decrees. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. You have been more unruly than the nations around you and have not followed my decrees or kept my laws. You have not even conformed to the standards of the nations around you. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. I myself am against you, Jerusalem, and I will inflict punishment on you in the sight of the nations. Because of all your detestable idols, I will do to you what I have never done before and will never do again. Therefore, in your midst, fathers will eat their children, and children will eat their fathers. I will inflict punishment on you and will scatter all your survivors to the winds. Therefore, as surely as I live, declares the Sovereign Lord, because you have defiled my sanctuary with all your vile images and detestable practices, I myself will withdraw my favor. I will not look on you with pity or spare you. A third of your people will die of the plague or perish by famine inside you. A third will fall by the sword outside your walls, and a third I will scatter to the winds and pursue with drawn sword. Then my anger will cease, and my wrath against them will subside, and I will be avenged. And when I have spent my wrath upon them, they will know that I, the Lord, have spoken in my zeal. I will make you a ruin and a reproach among the nations around you in the sight of all who pass by. You will be a reproach and a taunt, a warning and an object of horror to the nations around you when I inflict punishment on you in anger and in wrath and with stinging rebuke. I, the Lord, have spoken. When I shoot at you with my deadly and destructive arrows of famine, I will shoot to destroy you. I will bring more and more famine upon you and cut off your supply of food. I will send famine and wild beasts against you, and they will leave you childless. Plague and bloodshed will sweep through you, and I will bring the sword against you. I, the Lord, have spoken. Chapter 6 The Word of the Lord Came to Me Son of man, set your face against the mountains of Israel. Prophesy against them, and say, O mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Sovereign Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says to the mountains and hills, to the ravines and valleys. I am about to bring a sword against you, and I will destroy your high places. Your altars will be demolished, and your incense altars will be smashed, and I will slay your people in front of your idols. I will lay the dead bodies of the Israelites in front of their idols, and I will scatter your bones around your altars. Wherever you live, the towns will be laid waste and the high places demolished, so that your altars will be laid waste and devastated, your idols smashed and ruined, your incense altars broken down, and what you have made wiped out. Your people will fall slain among you and you will know that I am the Lord. But I will spare some, for some of you will escape the sword when you are scattered among the lands and nations. Then, in the nations where they have been carried captive, those who escape will remember me, how I have been grieved by their adulterous hearts which have turned away from me, and by their eyes which have lusted after their idols. They will loathe themselves for the evil they have done and for all their detestable practices, and they will know that I am the Lord. 
I did not threaten in vain to bring this calamity on them. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Strike your hands together and stamp your feet and cry out, Alas! Because of all the wicked and detestable practices of the house of Israel, for they will fall by the sword, famine, and plague. He that is far away will die of the plague, and he that is near will fall by the sword, and he that survives and is spared will die of famine. So will I spend my wrath upon them, and they will know that I am the Lord when their people lie slain among their idols around their altars, on every high hill and on all the mountain tops, under every spreading tree and every leafy oak, places where they offered fragrant incense to all their idols. And I will stretch out my hand against them and make the land a desolate waste from the desert to Dibla, wherever they live. Then they will know that I am the Lord. Chapter 7 The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, this is what the Sovereign Lord says to the land of Israel. The end, the end has come upon the four corners of the land. The end is now upon you, and I will unleash my anger against you. I will judge you according to your conduct and repay you for all your detestable practices. I will not look on you with pity or spare you. I will surely repay you for your conduct and the detestable practices among you. Then you will know that I am the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Disaster! An unheard of disaster is coming. The end has come. The end has come. It has roused itself against you. It has come. Doom has come upon you, you who dwell in the land. The time has come. The day is near. There is panic, not joy, upon the mountains. I am about to pour out my wrath on you and spend my anger against you. I will judge you according to your conduct and repay you for all your detestable practices. I will not look on you with pity or spare you. I will repay you in accordance with your conduct and the detestable practices among you. Then you will know that it is I, the Lord, who strikes the blow. The day is here. It has come. Doom has burst forth, the rod has budded, arrogance has blossomed. Violence has grown into a rod to punish wickedness. None of the people will be left, none of that crowd, no wealth, nothing of value. The time has come, the day has arrived. Let not the buyer rejoice, nor the seller grieve, for wrath is upon the whole crowd. The seller will not recover the land he has sold as long as both of them live, for the vision concerning the whole crowd will not be reversed. Because of their sins, not one of them will preserve his life. Though they blow the trumpet and get everything ready, no one will go into battle, for my wrath is upon the whole crowd. Outside is the sword, inside are plague and famine, those in the country will die by the sword, and those in the city will be devoured by famine and plague. All who survive and escape will be in the mountains, moaning like doves of the valleys, each because of his sins. Every hand will go limp, and every knee will become as weak as water. They will put on sackcloth and be clothed with terror. Their faces will be covered with shame, and their heads will be shaved. They will throw their silver into the streets, and their gold will be an unclean thing. Their silver and gold will not be able to save them in the day of the Lord's wrath. They will not satisfy their hunger or fill their stomachs with it, for it has made them stumble into sin. 
They were proud of their beautiful jewelry and used it to make their detestable idols and vile images. Therefore, I will turn these into an unclean thing for them. I will hand it all over as plunder to foreigners and as loot to the wicked of the earth, and they will defile it. I will turn my face away from them, and they will desecrate my treasured place. Robbers will enter it and desecrate it. Prepare chains, because the land is full of bloodshed and the city is full of violence. I will bring the most wicked of the nations to take possession of their houses. I will put an end to the pride of the mighty, and their sanctuaries will be desecrated. When terror comes, they will seek peace, but there will be none. Calamity upon calamity will come, and rumor upon rumor. They will try to get a vision from the prophet. The teaching of the law by the priest will be lost, as will the counsel of the elders. The king will mourn, the prince will be clothed with despair, and the hands of the people of the land will tremble. I will deal with them according to their conduct, and by their own standards I will judge them. Then they will know that I am the Lord. Chapter 8 In the sixth year, in the sixth month, on the fifth day, while I was sitting in my house, and the elders of Judah were sitting before me, the hand of the Sovereign Lord came upon me there. I looked, and I saw a figure like that of a man. From what appeared to be his waist down, he was like fire, and from there up his appearance was as bright as glowing metal. He stretched out what looked like a hand and took me by the hair of my head. The Spirit lifted me up between earth and heaven, and in visions of God he took me to Jerusalem, to the entrance to the north gate of the inner court where the idol that provokes to jealousy stood. And there before me was the glory of the God of Israel, as in the vision I had seen in the plain. Then he said to me, Son of man, look toward the north. So I looked, and in the entrance north of the gate of the altar I saw this idol of jealousy. And he said to me, Son of man, do you see what they are doing? The utterly detestable things the house of Israel is doing here, things that will drive me far from my sanctuary. But you will see things that are even more detestable. Then he brought me to the entrance to the court. I looked, and I saw a hole in the wall. He said to me, Son of man, now dig into the wall. So I dug into the wall and saw a doorway there. And he said to me, Go in and see the wicked and detestable things they are doing here. So I went in and looked, and I saw portrayed all over the walls all kinds of crawling things and detestable animals and all the idols of the house of Israel. In front of them stood seventy elders of the house of Israel, and Jeazaniah, son of Shaphan, was standing among them. Each had a censer in his hand, and a fragrant cloud of incense was rising. He said to me, Son of man, have you seen what the elders of the house of Israel are doing in the darkness, each at the shrine of his own idol? They say, The Lord does not see us. The Lord has forsaken the land. Again, he said, you will see them doing things that are even more detestable. Then he brought me to the entrance to the north gate of the house of the Lord, and I saw women sitting there, mourning for Thomas. He said to me, Do you see this, son of man? You will see things that are even more detestable than this. He then brought me into the inner court of the house of the Lord. And there, at the entrance to the temple between the portico and the altar, were about twenty-five men. 
with their backs toward the temple of the Lord and their faces toward the east, they were bowing down to the sun in the east. He said to me, Have you seen this, son of man? Is it a trivial matter for the house of Judah to do the detestable things they are doing here? Must they also fill the land with violence and continually provoke me to anger? Look at them, putting the branch to their nose. Therefore I will deal with them in anger. I will not look on them with pity or spare them. Although they shout in my ears, I will not listen to them. Chapter 9 Then I heard him call out in a loud voice, Bring the guards of the city here, each with a weapon in his hand. And I saw six men coming from the direction of the upper gate which faces north, each with a deadly weapon in his hand. With them was a man clothed in linen who had a writing kit at his side. They came in and stood beside the bronze altar. Now, the glory of the God of Israel went up from above the cherubim where it had been and moved to the threshold of the temple. Then the Lord called to the man clothed in linen who had the writing kit at his side and said to him, Go throughout the city of Jerusalem and put a mark on the foreheads of those who grieve and lament over all the detestable things that are done in it. As I listened, he said to the others, Follow him through the city and kill, without showing pity or compassion. Slaughter old men, young men and maidens, women and children, but do not touch anyone who has the mark. Begin at my sanctuary. So they began with the elders who were in front of the temple. Then he said to them, Defile the temple and fill the courts with the slain. Go! So they went out and began killing throughout the city. While they were killing and I was left alone, I fell face down, crying out, Ah, Sovereign Lord, are you going to destroy the entire remnant of Israel in this outpouring of your wrath on Jerusalem? He answered me, The sin of the house of Israel and Judah is exceedingly great. The land is full of bloodshed, and the city is full of injustice. They say, The Lord has forsaken the land, the Lord does not see. So I will not look on them with pity or spare them, but I will bring down on their own heads what they have done. Then the man in linen with the writing kit at his side brought back word, saying, I have done as you commanded. Chapter 10 I looked, and I saw the likeness of a throne of sapphire above the expanse that was over the heads of the cherubim. The Lord said to the man clothed in linen, Go in among the wheels beneath the cherubim. Fill your hands with burning coals from among the cherubim and scatter them over the city. And as I watched, he went in. Now, the cherubim were standing on the south side of the temple when the man went in and a cloud filled the inner court. Then the glory of the Lord rose from above the cherubim and moved to the threshold of the temple. The cloud filled the temple, and the court was full of the radiance of the glory of the Lord. The sound of the wings of the cherubim could be heard as far away as the outer court, like the voice of God Almighty when he speaks. When the Lord commanded the man in linen, Take fire from among the wheels, from among the cherubim. The man went in and stood beside a wheel. Then one of the cherubim reached out his hand to the fire that was among them. He took up some of it and put it into the hands of the man in linen, who took it and went out. Under the wings of the cherubim could be seen what looked like the hands of a man. I looked and I saw beside the cherubim four wheels, one beside each of the cherubim. The wheels sparkled like chrysolite. As for their appearance, the four of them looked alike. Each was like a wheel intersecting a wheel. As they moved, 
They would go in any one of the four directions the cherubim faced. The wheels did not turn about as the cherubim went. The cherubim went in whatever direction the head faced, without turning as they went. Their entire bodies, including their backs, their hands, and their wings, were completely full of eyes, as were their four wheels. I heard the wheels being called the whirling wheels. Each of the cherubim had four faces. One face was that of a cherub, the second the face of a man, the third the face of a lion, and the fourth the face of an eagle. Then the cherubim rose upward. These were the living creatures I had seen by the Kibar River. When the cherubim moved, the wheels beside them moved. And when the cherubim spread their wings to rise from the ground, the wheels did not leave their side. When the cherubim stood still, they also stood still. And when the cherubim rose, they rose with them, because the spirit of the living creatures was in them. Then the glory of the Lord departed from over the threshold of the temple and stopped above the cherubim. While I watched, the cherubim spread their wings and rose from the ground, and as they went, the wheels went with them. They stopped at the entrance to the east gate of the Lord's house, and the glory of the God of Israel was above them. These were the living creatures I had seen beneath the God of Israel by the Kibar River, and I realized that they were cherubim. Each had four faces and four wings, and under their wings was what looked like the hands of a man. Their faces had the same appearance as those I had seen by the Kibar River. Each one went straight ahead. Chapter 11 Then the Spirit lifted me up and brought me to the gate of the house of the Lord that faces east. There, at the entrance to the gate, were twenty-five men. And I saw among them Jeazaniah, son of Azur, and Pelatiah, son of Baneah, leaders of the people. The Lord said to me, Son of man, these are the men who are plotting evil and giving wicked advice in this city. They say, Will it not soon be time to build houses? This city is a cooking pot, and we are the meat. Therefore prophesy against them. Prophesy, son of man. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon me, and he told me to say, This is what the Lord says. That is what you are saying, O house of Israel, but I know what is going through your mind. You have killed many people in this city and filled its streets with the dead. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. The bodies you have thrown there are the meat, and this city is the pot. But I will drive you out of it. You fear the sword, and the sword is what I will bring against you, declares the Sovereign Lord. I will drive you out of the city and hand you over to foreigners and inflict punishment on you. You will fall by the sword, and I will execute judgment on you at the borders of Israel. Then you will know that I am the Lord. This city will not be a pot for you, nor will you be the meat in it. I will execute judgment on you at the borders of Israel, and you will know that I am the Lord, for you have not followed my decrees or kept my laws, but have conformed to the standards of the nations around you. Now, as I was prophesying, Pelatiah, son of Benaiah, died. Then I fell face down and cried out in a loud voice, Ah, oh, Sovereign Lord, will you completely destroy the remnant of Israel? The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, your brothers, your brothers who are your blood relatives and the whole house of Israel are those of whom the people of Jerusalem have said they are far away from the Lord. This land was given to us as our possession. Therefore say, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. 
Although I sent them far away among the nations and scattered them among the countries, yet for a little while I have been a sanctuary for them in the countries where they have gone. Therefore, say, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. I will gather you from the nations and bring you back from the countries where you have been scattered, and I will give you back the land of Israel again. They will return to it and remove all its vile images and detestable idols. I will give them an undivided heart and put a new spirit in them. I will remove from them their heart of stone and give them a heart of flesh. Then they will follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. They will be my people and I will be their God. But as for those whose hearts are devoted to their vile images and detestable idols, I will bring down on their own heads what they have done, declares the Sovereign Lord. Then the cherubim, with the wheels beside them, spread their wings, and the glory of the God of Israel was above them. The glory of the Lord went up from within the city and stopped above the mountain east of it. The Spirit lifted me up and brought me to the exiles in Babylonia in the vision given by the Spirit of God. Then the vision I had seen went up from me, and I told the exiles everything the Lord had shown me. Chapter 12 The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, you are living among a rebellious people. They have eyes to see but do not see, and ears to hear but do not hear, for they are a rebellious people. Therefore, son of man, pack your belongings for exile, and in the daytime, as they watch, set out and go from where you are to another place. Perhaps they will understand, though they are a rebellious house. During the daytime, while they watch, bring out your belongings packed for exile. Then, in the evening, while they are watching, go out like those who go into exile. While they watch, dig through the wall and take your belongings out through it. Put them on your shoulder as they are watching and carry them out at dusk. Cover your face so that you cannot see the land, for I have made you a sign to the house of Israel. So I did as I was commanded. During the day I brought out my things packed for exile. Then in the evening I dug through the wall with my hands. I took my belongings out at dusk, carrying them on my shoulders while they watched. In the morning the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, did not that rebellious house of Israel ask you, What are you doing? Say to them, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. This oracle concerns the prince in Jerusalem and the whole house of Israel who are there. Say to them, I am assigned to you. As I have done, so it will be done to them. They will go into exile as captives. The prince among them will put his things on his shoulder at dusk and leave, and a hole will be dug in the wall for him to go through. He will cover his face so that he cannot see the land. I will spread my net for him and he will be caught in my snare. I will bring him to Babylonia, the land of the Chaldeans, but he will not see it, and there he will die. I will scatter to the winds all those around him, his staff and all his troops, and I will pursue them with drawn sword. They will know that I am the Lord when I disperse them among the nations and scatter them through the countries. But I will spare a few of them from the sword, famine, and plague, so that in the nations where they go they may acknowledge all their detestable practices. Then they will know that I am the Lord. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, tremble as you eat your food, and shudder in fear as you drink your water. Say to the people of the land, this is what the Sovereign Lord says about those living in Jerusalem and in the land of Israel. They will eat their food in anxiety and drink their water in despair, for their land will be stripped of everything in it because of the violence of all who live there. 
the inhabited towns will be laid waste, and the land will be desolate. Then you will know that I am the Lord. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, what is this proverb you have in the land of Israel? The days go by and every vision comes to nothing? Say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. I am going to put an end to this proverb and they will no longer quote it in Israel. Say to them, the days are near when every vision will be fulfilled. For there will be no more false visions or flattering divinations among the people of Israel. But I, the Lord, will speak what I will, and it shall be fulfilled without delay. For in your days, you rebellious house, I will fulfill whatever I say, declares the Sovereign Lord. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, the house of Israel is saying, the vision he sees is for many years from now, and he prophesies about the distant future. Therefore say to them, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. None of my words will be delayed any longer. Whatever I say will be fulfilled, declares the Sovereign Lord. Chapter 13 The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, Prophesy against the prophets of Israel who are now prophesying. Say to those who prophesy out of their own imagination, Hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Woe to the foolish prophets who follow their own spirit and have seen nothing. Your prophets, O Israel, are like jackals among ruins. You have not gone up to the breaks in the wall to repair it for the house of Israel so that it will stand firm in the battle on the day of the Lord. Their visions are false and their divinations a lie. They say, the Lord declares when the Lord has not sent them, yet they expect their words to be fulfilled. Have you not seen false visions and uttered lying divinations when you say, the Lord declares though I have not spoken? Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. Because of your false words and lying visions, I am against you, declares the Sovereign Lord. My hand will be against the prophets who see false visions and utter lying divinations. They will not belong to the council of my people or be listed in the records of the house of Israel, nor will they enter the land of Israel. Then you will know that I am the Sovereign Lord. Because they lead my people astray, saying, Peace, when there is no peace. And because when a flimsy wall is built, they cover it with whitewash. Therefore, tell those who cover it with whitewash that it is going to fall. Rain will come in torrents, and I will send hailstones hurtling down, and violent winds will burst forth. When the wall collapses, will people not ask you? Where is the whitewash you covered it with? Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. In my wrath, I will unleash a violent wind, and in my anger, hailstones and torrents of rain will fall with destructive fury. I will tear down the wall you have covered with whitewash and will level it to the ground so that its foundation will be laid bare. When it falls, you will be destroyed in it and you will know that I am the Lord. So I will spend my wrath against the wall and against those who covered it with whitewash. I will say to you, the wall is gone, and so are those who whitewashed it, those prophets of Israel who prophesied to Jerusalem and saw visions of peace for her when there was no peace, declares the Sovereign Lord. Now, son of man, Set your face against the daughters of your people who prophesy out of their own imagination. Prophesy against them and say, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Woe to the women who sew magic charms on all their wrists and make veils of various lengths for their heads in order to ensnare people. Will you ensnare the lives of my people but preserve your own? You have profaned me among my people for a few handfuls of barley and scraps of bread. 
by lying to my people who listen to lies. You have killed those who should not have died and have spared those who should not live. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. I am against your magic charms with which you ensnare people like birds, and I will tear them from your arms. I will set free the people that you ensnare like birds. I will tear off your veils and save my people from your hands, and they will no longer fall prey to your power. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Because you disheartened the righteous with your lies when I had brought them no grief, and because you encourage the wicked not to turn from their evil ways and so save their lives, therefore you will no longer see false visions or practice divination. I will save my people from your hands, and then you will know that I am the Lord. Chapter 14 Some of the elders of Israel came to me and sat down in front of me. Then the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, these men have set up idols in their hearts and put wicked stumbling blocks before their faces. Should I let them inquire of me at all? Therefore, speak to them and tell them, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. When any Israelite sets up idols in his heart and puts a wicked stumbling block before his face and then goes to a prophet, I, the Lord, will answer him myself in keeping with his great idolatry. I will do this to recapture the hearts of the people of Israel, who have all deserted me for their idols. Therefore, say to the house of Israel, This is what the Sovereign Lord says, Repent, turn from your idols, and renounce all your detestable practices. When any Israelite or any alien living in Israel separates himself from me and sets up idols in his heart and puts a wicked stumbling block before his face and then goes to a prophet to inquire of me, I, the Lord, will answer him myself. I will set my face against that man and make him an example and a byword. I will cut him off from my people. Then you will know that I am the Lord. And if the prophet is enticed to utter a prophecy. I, the Lord, have enticed that prophet, and I will stretch out my hand against him and destroy him from among my people Israel. They will bear their guilt. The prophet will be as guilty as the one who consults him. Then the people of Israel will no longer stray from me, nor will they defile themselves any more with all their sins. They will be my people, and I will be their God declares the Sovereign Lord. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, if a country sins against me by being unfaithful, and I stretch out my hand against it to cut off its food supply, and send famine upon it, and kill its men and their animals, even if these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job, were in it, they could save only themselves by their righteousness, declares the Sovereign Lord. Or if I send wild beasts through that country, and they leave it childless, and it becomes desolate so that no one can pass through it because of the beasts, as surely as I live, declares the Sovereign Lord, even if these three men were in it, they could not save their own sons or daughters. They alone would be saved, but the land would be desolate. Or if I bring a sword against that country and say, Let the sword pass throughout the land, and I kill its men and their animals, as surely as I live, declares the Sovereign Lord, even if these three men were in it, they could not save their own sons or daughters. They alone would be saved. Or if I send a plague into that land and pour out my wrath upon it through bloodshed, killing its men and their animals, as surely as I live, declares the Sovereign Lord, even if Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, they could save neither son nor daughter. They would save only themselves by their righteousness. For this is what the Sovereign Lord says. How much worse will it be when I send against Jerusalem my four dreadful judgments, sword and famine and wild beasts and plague to kill its men and their animals? Yet there will be some survivors, sons and daughters who will be brought out of it. They will come to you, and when you see their conduct and their actions, 
you will be consoled regarding the disaster I have brought upon Jerusalem, every disaster I have brought upon it, you will be consoled when you see their conduct and their actions, for you will know that I have done nothing in it without cause, declares the Sovereign Lord. Chapter 15 The Word of the Lord Came to Me Son of man, how is the wood of a vine better than that of a branch on any of the trees in the forest? Is wood ever taken from it to make anything useful? Do they make pegs from it to hang things on? And after it is thrown on the fire as fuel, and the fire burns both ends and chars the middle, is it then useful for anything? If it was not useful for anything when it was whole, how much less can it be made into something useful when the fire has burned it and it is charred? Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. As I have given the wood of the vine among the trees of the forest as fuel for the fire, so will I treat the people living in Jerusalem. I will set my face against them. Although they have come out of the fire, the fire will yet consume them. And when I set my face against them, you will know that I am the Lord. I will make the land desolate because they have been unfaithful, declares the Sovereign Lord. Chapter 16 The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, confront Jerusalem with her detestable practices and say, this is what the Sovereign Lord says to Jerusalem. Your ancestry and birth were in the land of the Canaanites. Your father was an Amorite and your mother a Hittite. On the day you were born, your cord was not cut, nor were you washed with water to make you clean, nor were you rubbed with salt or wrapped in cloths. No one looked on you with pity or had compassion enough to do any of these things for you. Rather, you were thrown out into the open field, for on the day you were born you were despised. Then I passed by and saw you kicking about in your blood, And as you lay there in your blood, I said to you, Live! I made you grow like a plant of the field. You grew up and developed and became the most beautiful of jewels. Your breasts were formed and your hair grew, you who were naked and bare. Later I passed by, and when I looked at you and saw that you were old enough for love, I spread the corner of my garment over you and covered your nakedness. I gave you my solemn oath and entered into a covenant with you, declares the Sovereign Lord, and you became mine. I bathed you with water and washed the blood from you and put ointments on you. I clothed you with an embroidered dress and put leather sandals on you. I dressed you in fine linen and covered you with costly garments. I adorned you with jewelry. I put bracelets on your arms and a necklace around your neck, and I put a ring on your nose, earrings on your ears, and a beautiful crown on your head. So you were adorned with gold and silver. Your clothes were of fine linen and costly fabric and embroidered cloth. Your food was fine flour, honey, and olive oil. You became very beautiful and rose to be a queen and your fame spread among the nations on account of your beauty, because the splendor I had given you made your beauty perfect, declares the Sovereign Lord. But you trusted in your beauty and used your fame to become a prostitute. You lavished your favors on anyone who passed by, and your beauty became his. You took some of your garments to make gaudy high places where you carried on your prostitution. Such things should not happen, nor should they ever occur. You also took the fine jewelry I gave you, the jewelry made of my gold and silver, and you made for yourself male idols and engaged in prostitution with them. And you took your embroidered clothes to put on them, and you offered my oil and incense before them. Also the food I provided for you, the fine flour, olive oil, and honey I gave you to eat, you offered as fragrant incense before them. This is what happened, declares the Sovereign Lord. And you took your sons and daughters whom you bore to me and sacrificed them as food to the idols. Was your prostitution not enough? 
you slaughtered my children and sacrificed them to the idols. In all your detestable practices and your prostitution, you did not remember the days of your youth when you were naked and bare, kicking about in your blood. Woe, woe to you, declares the Sovereign Lord. In addition to all your other wickedness, you built a mound for yourself and made a lofty shrine in every public square. At the head of every street, you built your lofty shrines and degraded your beauty, offering your body with increasing promiscuity to anyone who passed by. You engaged in prostitution with the Egyptians, your lustful neighbors, and provoked me to anger with your increasing promiscuity. So I stretched out my hand against you and reduced your territory. I gave you over to the greed of your enemies, the daughters of the Philistines, who were shocked by your lewd conduct. You engaged in prostitution with the Assyrians, too, because you were insatiable. And even after that, you still were not satisfied. Then you increased your promiscuity to include Babylonia, a land of merchants, but even with this you were not satisfied. How weak-willed you are, declares the Sovereign Lord, when you do all these things, acting like a brazen prostitute. When you built your mounds at the head of every street and made your lofty shrines in every public square, you were unlike a prostitute because you scorned payment. You adulterous wife! You prefer strangers to your own husband. Every prostitute receives a fee, but you give gifts to all your lovers, bribing them to come to you from everywhere for your illicit favors. So in your prostitution, you are the opposite of others. No one runs after you for your favors. You are the very opposite, for you give payment, and none is given to you. Therefore, you prostitute, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Because you poured out your wealth and exposed your nakedness in your promiscuity with your lovers, and because of all your detestable idols, and because you gave them your children's blood, therefore I am going to gather all your lovers with whom you found pleasure, those you loved as well as those you hated. I will gather them against you from all around and will strip you in front of them, and they will see all your nakedness. I will sentence you to the punishment of women who commit adultery and who shed blood. I will bring upon you the blood vengeance of my wrath and jealous anger. Then I will hand you over to your lovers, and they will tear down your mounds and destroy your lofty shrines. They will strip you of your clothes and take your fine jewelry and leave you naked and bare. They will bring a mob against you who will stone you and hack you to pieces with their swords. They will burn down your houses and inflict punishment on you in the sight of many women. I will put a stop to your prostitution, and you will no longer pay your lovers. Then my wrath against you will subside, and my jealous anger will turn away from you. I will be calm and no longer angry. Because you did not remember the days of your youth, but enraged me, With all these things, I will surely bring down on your head what you have done, declares the Sovereign Lord. Did you not add lewdness to all your other detestable practices? Everyone who quotes Proverbs will quote this proverb about you. Like mother, like daughter. You are a true daughter of your mother, who despised her husband and her children. And you are a true sister of your sisters, who despise their husbands and their children. Your mother was a Hittite and your father an Amorite. Your older sister was Samaria, who lived to the north of you with her daughters. And your younger sister, who lived to the south of you with her daughters, was Sodom. You not only walked in their ways and copied their detestable practices, but in all your ways you soon became more depraved than they. As surely as I live, declares the Sovereign Lord. Your sister Sodom and her daughters never did what you and your daughters have done. Now this was the sin of your sister Sodom. She and her daughters were arrogant, overfed, and unconcerned. They did not help the poor and needy. They were haughty and did detestable things before me. Therefore I did away with them as you have seen. 
Samaria did not commit half the sins you did. You have done more detestable things than they, and have made your sisters seem righteous by all these things you have done. Bear your disgrace, for you have furnished some justification for your sisters. Because your sins were more vile than theirs, they appear more righteous than you. So then, be ashamed and bear your disgrace, for you have made your sisters appear righteous. However, I will restore the fortunes of Sodom and her daughters, and of Samaria and her daughters, and your fortunes along with them so that you may bear your disgrace and be ashamed of all you have done in giving them comfort. And your sisters, Sodom with her daughters and Samaria with her daughters, will return to what they were before, and you and your daughters will return to what you were before. You would not even mention your sister Sodom in the day of your pride before your wickedness was uncovered. Even so, you are now scorned by the daughters of Edom and all her neighbors and the daughters of the Philistines, all those around you who despise you. You will bear the consequences of your lewdness and your detestable practices, declares the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. I will deal with you as you deserve, because you have despised my oath by breaking the covenant. Yet I will remember the covenant I made with you in the days of your youth, and I will establish an everlasting covenant with you. Then you will remember your ways and be ashamed when you receive your sisters, both those who are older than you and those who are younger. I will give them to you as daughters, but not on the basis of my covenant with you. So I will establish my covenant with you, and you will know that I am the Lord. Then, when I make atonement for you, for all you have done, you will remember and be ashamed and never again open your mouth because of your humiliation, declares the Sovereign Lord. Chapter 17 The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, set forth an allegory and tell the house of Israel a parable. Say to them, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. A great eagle with powerful wings, long feathers, and full plumage of varied colors came to Lebanon. Taking hold of the top of a cedar, he broke off its topmost shoot and carried it away to a land of merchants, where he planted it in a city of traders. He took some of the seed of your land and put it in fertile soil. He planted it like a willow by abundant water, and it sprouted and became a low, spreading vine. Its branches turned toward him, but its roots remained under it. So it became a vine, and produced branches, and put out leafy boughs. But there was another great eagle with powerful wings and full plumage. The vine now sent out its roots toward him from the plot where it was planted, and stretched out its branches to him for water. It had been planted in good soil by abundant water so that it would produce branches, bear fruit, and become a splendid vine. Say to them, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Will it thrive? Will it not be uprooted and stripped of its fruit so that it withers? All its new growth will wither. It will not take a strong arm or many people to pull it up by the roots. Even if it is transplanted, will it thrive? Will it not wither completely when the east wind strikes it, wither away in the plot where it grew? Then the word of the Lord came to me. Say to this rebellious house, Do you not know what these things mean? Say to them, The king of Babylon went to Jerusalem and carried off her king and her nobles, bringing them back with him to Babylon. Then he took a member of the royal family and made a treaty with him, putting him under oath. He also carried away the leading men of the land, so that the kingdom would be brought low, unable to rise again, surviving only by keeping his treaty. But the king rebelled against him by sending his envoys to Egypt to get horses and a large army. Will he succeed? Will he who does such things escape? Will he break the treaty and yet escape? As surely as I live, declares the Sovereign Lord, he shall die 
in Babylon, in the land of the king who put him on the throne, whose oath he despised and whose treaty he broke. Pharaoh, with his mighty army and great horde, will be of no help to him in war when ramps are built and siege works erected to destroy many lives. He despised the oath by breaking the covenant. Because he had given his hand in pledge and yet did all these things, he shall not escape. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. As surely as I live, I will bring down on his head my oath that he despised and my covenant that he broke. I will spread my net for him, and he will be caught in my snare. I will bring him to Babylon and execute judgment upon him there because he was unfaithful to me. All his fleeing troops will fall by the sword, and the survivors will be scattered to the winds. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. I myself will take a shoot from the very top of a cedar and plant it. I will break off a tender sprig from its topmost shoots and plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain heights of Israel I will plant it. It will produce branches and bear fruit and become a splendid cedar. Birds of every kind will nest in it. They will find shelter in the shade of its branches. All the trees of the field will know that I, the Lord, bring down the tall tree and make the low tree grow tall. I dry up the green tree and make the dry tree flourish. I, the Lord, have spoken and I will do it. Chapter 18 The word of the Lord came to me. What do you people mean by quoting this proverb about the land of Israel? The fathers eat sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. As surely as I live, declares the Sovereign Lord, you will no longer quote this proverb in Israel. For every living soul belongs to me the Father as well as the Son, both alike belong to me. The soul who sins is the one who will die. Suppose there is a righteous man who does what is just and right. He does not eat at the mountain shrines or look to the idols of the house of Israel. He does not defile his neighbor's wife or lie with a woman during her period. He does not oppress anyone, but returns what he took in pledge for a loan. He does not commit robbery, but gives his food to the hungry and provides clothing for the naked. He does not lend at usury or take excessive interest. He withholds his hand from doing wrong and judges fairly between man and man. He follows my decrees and faithfully keeps my laws. That man is righteous. He will surely live, declares the Sovereign Lord. Suppose he has a violent son who sheds blood or does any of these other things, though the father has done none of them. He eats at the mountain shrines. He defiles his neighbor's wife. He oppresses the poor and needy. He commits robbery. He does not return what he took in pledge. He looks to the idols. He does detestable things. He lends at usury and takes excessive interest. Will such a man live? He will not. Because he has done all these detestable things, he will surely be put to death, and his blood will be on his own head. But suppose this son has a son, who sees all the sins his father commits, and though he sees them, he does not do such things. He does not eat at the mountain shrines, or look to the idols of the house of Israel. He does not defile his neighbor's wife. He does not oppress anyone, or require a pledge for a loan. He does not commit robbery, but gives his food to the hungry and provides clothing for the naked. He withholds his hand from sin and takes no usury or excessive interest. He keeps my laws and follows my decrees. He will not die for his father's sin. He will surely live. But his father will die for his own sin because he practiced extortion, robbed his brother, and did what was wrong among his people. Yet you ask, why does the son not share the guilt of his father? Since the son has done what is just and right and has been careful to keep all my decrees, he will surely live. The soul who sins is the one who will die. 
The son will not share the guilt of the father, nor will the father share the guilt of the son. The righteousness of a righteous man will be credited to him, and the wickedness of the wicked will be charged against him. But if a wicked man turns away from all the sins he has committed and keeps all my decrees and does what is just and right, he will surely live. He will not die. None of the offenses he has committed will be remembered against him. Because of the righteous things he has done, he will live. Do I take any pleasure in the death of the wicked? declares the Sovereign Lord. Rather, am I not pleased when they turn from their ways and live? But if a righteous man turns from his righteousness and commits sin and does the same detestable things the wicked man does, will he live? None of the righteous things he has done will be remembered. Because of the unfaithfulness he is guilty of and because of the sins he has committed, he will die. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is not just. Hear, O house of Israel, is my way unjust? Is it not your ways that are unjust? If a righteous man turns from his righteousness and commits sin, he will die for it. Because of the sin he has committed, he will die. But if a wicked man turns away from the wickedness he has committed and does what is just and right, he will save his life. Because he considers all the offenses he has committed and turns away from them, he will surely live. He will not die. Yet the house of Israel says, The way of the Lord is not just. Are my ways unjust, O house of Israel? Is it not your ways that are unjust? Therefore, O house of Israel, I will judge you each one according to his ways, declares the Sovereign Lord. Repent! Turn away from all your offenses, then sin will not be your downfall. Rid yourselves of all the offenses you have committed and get a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel? For I take no pleasure in the death of anyone, declares the Sovereign Lord. Repent and live. Chapter 19 Take up a lament concerning the princes of Israel and say, What a lioness was your mother among the lions! She lay down among the young lions and reared her cubs. She brought up one of her cubs, and he became a strong lion. He learned to tear the prey, and he devoured men. The nations heard about him, and he was trapped in their pit. They led him with hooks to the land of Egypt. When she saw her hope unfulfilled, her expectation gone, she took another of her cubs and made him a strong lion. He prowled among the lions, for he was now a strong lion. He learned to tear the prey, and he devoured men. He broke down their strongholds and devastated their towns. The land and all who were in it were terrified by his roaring. Then the nations came against him. Those from regions round about, they spread their net for him, and he was trapped in their pit. With hooks, they pulled him into a cage and brought him to the king of Babylon. They put him in prison, so his roar was heard no longer on the mountains of Israel. Your mother was like a vine in your vineyard, planted by the water. It was fruitful and full of branches because of abundant water. Its branches were strong, fit for a ruler's scepter. It towered high above the thick foliage, conspicuous for its height and for its many branches, but it was uprooted in fury and thrown to the ground. The east wind made it shrivel. It was stripped of its fruit. Its strong branches withered and fire consumed them. Now it is planted in the desert, in a dry and thirsty land. Fire spread from one of its main branches and consumed its fruit. No strong branch is left on it, fit for a ruler's scepter. This is a lament, and is to be used as a lament. Chapter 20 In the seventh year, in the fifth month, on the tenth day, some of the elders of Israel came to inquire of the Lord, and they sat down in front of me. Then the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, speak to the elders of Israel, and say to them, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. 
Have you come to inquire of me? As surely as I live, I will not let you inquire of me, declares the Sovereign Lord. Will you judge them? Will you judge them, son of man? Then confront them with the detestable practices of their fathers and say to them, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. On the day I chose Israel, I swore with uplifted hand to the descendants of the house of Jacob and revealed myself to them in Egypt. With uplifted hand I said to them, I am the Lord your God. On that day I swore to them that I would bring them out of Egypt into a land I had searched out for them, a land flowing with milk and honey, the most beautiful of all lands. And I said to them, Each of you, get rid of the vile images you have set your eyes on and do not defile yourselves with the idols of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. But they rebelled against me and would not listen to me. They did not get rid of the vile images they had set their eyes on, nor did they forsake the idols of Egypt. So I said I would pour out my wrath on them and spend my anger against them in Egypt. But for the sake of my name, I did what would keep it from being profaned in the eyes of the nations they lived among, and in whose sight I had revealed myself to the Israelites by bringing them out of Egypt. Therefore I led them out of Egypt and brought them into the desert. I gave them my decrees and made known to them my laws, for the man who obeys them will live by them. Also I gave them my Sabbaths as a sign between us, so they would know that I, the Lord, made them holy. Yet the people of Israel rebelled against me in the desert. They did not follow my decrees, but rejected my laws although the man who obeys them will live by them, and they utterly desecrated my Sabbaths. So I said I would pour out my wrath on them and destroy them in the desert. But for the sake of my name, I did what would keep it from being profaned in the eyes of the nations in whose sight I had brought them out. Also, with uplifted hand, I swore to them in the desert that I would not bring them into the land I had given them, a land flowing with milk, and honey most beautiful of all lands, because they rejected my laws and did not follow my decrees and desecrated my Sabbaths, for their hearts were devoted to their idols. Yet I looked on them with pity and did not destroy them or put an end to them in the desert. I said to their children in the desert, Do not follow the statutes of your fathers, or keep their laws, or defile yourselves with their idols. I am the Lord your God. Follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. Keep my Sabbaths holy that they may be a sign between us. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. But the children rebelled against me. They did not follow my decrees. They were not careful to keep my laws, although the man who obeys them will live by them, and they desecrated my Sabbaths. So I said I would pour out my wrath on them and spend my anger against them in the desert, but I withheld my hand. And for the sake of my name, I did what would keep it from being profaned in the eyes of the nations in whose sight I had brought them out. Also, with uplifted hand, I swore to them in the desert that I would disperse them among the nations and scatter them through the countries because they had not obeyed my laws, but had rejected my decrees and desecrated my Sabbaths, and their eyes lusted after their father's idols. I also gave them over to statutes that were not good and laws they could not live by. I let them become defiled through their gifts the sacrifice of every firstborn, that I might fill them with horror so they would know that I am the Lord. Therefore, son of man, speak to the people of Israel and say to them, This is what the sovereign Lord says. In this also your fathers blasphemed me by forsaking me. When I brought them into the land I had sworn to give them, and they saw any high hill or any leafy tree, there they offered their sacrifices. 
made offerings that provoked me to anger, presented their fragrant incense, and poured out their drink offerings. Then I said to them, What is this high place you go to? It is called Bema to this day. Therefore say to the house of Israel, This is what the sovereign Lord says. Will you defile yourselves the way your fathers did and lust after their vile images? When you offer your gifts, the sacrifice of your sons in the fire, you continue to defile yourselves with all your idols to this day. Am I to let you inquire of me, O house of Israel? As surely as I live, declares the sovereign Lord, I will not let you inquire of me. You say, we want to be like the nations, like the peoples of the world who serve wood and stone, but what you have in mind will never happen. As surely as I live, declares the sovereign Lord, I will rule over you with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm and with outpoured wrath. I will bring you from the nations and gather you from the countries where you have been scattered with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm and with outpoured wrath. I will bring you into the desert of the nations, and there, face to face, I will execute judgment upon you. As I judged your fathers in the desert of the land of Egypt, so I will judge you, declares the Sovereign Lord. I will take note of you as you pass under my rod, and I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. I will purge you of those who revolt and rebel against me. Although I will bring them out of the land where they are living, yet they will not enter the land of Israel. Then you will know that I am the Lord. As for you, O house of Israel, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. Go and serve your idols, every one of you. But afterward, you will surely listen to me and no longer profane my holy name with your gifts and idols. For on my holy mountain, the high mountain of Israel, declares the Sovereign Lord. There in the land, the entire house of Israel will serve me, and there I will accept them. There I will require your offerings and your choice of gifts, along with all your holy sacrifices. I will accept you as fragrant incense when I bring you out from the nations and gather you from the countries where you have been scattered, and I will show myself holy among you in the sight of the nations. Then you will know that I am the Lord, when I bring you into the land of Israel, the land I had sworn with uplifted hand to give to your fathers, there you will remember your conduct and all the actions by which you have defiled yourselves, and you will loathe yourselves for all the evil you have done. You will know that I am the Lord when I deal with you for my name's sake, and not according to your evil ways and your corrupt practices, O house of Israel, declares the Sovereign Lord. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, set your face toward the south. Preach against the south and prophesy against the forest of the southland. Say to the southern forest, Hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. I am about to set fire to you, and it will consume all your trees, both green and dry. The blazing flame will not be quenched, and every face from south to north will be scorched by it. Everyone will see that I, the Lord, have kindled it. It will not be quenched. Then I said, Sovereign Lord, they are saying of me, isn't he just telling parables? Chapter 21 The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, set your face against Jerusalem and preach against the sanctuary. Prophesy against the land of Israel and say to her, This is what the Lord says, I am against you. I will draw my sword from its scabbard and cut off from you both the righteous and the wicked. Because I am going to cut off the righteous and the wicked, my sword will be unsheathed against everyone from south to north. Then all people will know that I, the Lord, have drawn my sword from its scabbard. It will not return again. Therefore groan, son of man, groan before them with broken heart and bitter grief. And when they ask you, why are you groaning? You shall say, because of the news that is coming. 
every heart will melt and every hand go limp. Every spirit will become faint and every knee become as weak as water. It is coming. It will surely take place, declares the Sovereign Lord. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, prophesy and say, This is what the Lord says. A sword, a sword sharpened and polished, sharpened for the slaughter, polished to flash like lightning. Shall we rejoice in the scepter of my son Judah? The sword despises every such stick. The sword is appointed to be polished, to be grasped with the hand. It is sharpened and polished, made ready for the hand of the slayer. Cry out and wail, son of man, for it is against my people. It is against all the princes of Israel. They are thrown to the sword along with my people. Therefore beat your breast. Testing will surely come. And what if the scepter of Judah, which the sword despises, does not continue, declares the sovereign Lord. So then, son of man, prophesy and strike your hands together. Let the sword strike twice, even three times. It is a sword for slaughter, a sword for great slaughter, closing in on them from every side so that hearts may melt and the fallen be many. I have stationed the sword for slaughter at all their gates. Oh, it is made to flash like lightning. It is grasped for slaughter. Oh, sword, slash to the right, then to the left, wherever your blade is turned. I, too, will strike my hands together and my wrath will subside. I, the Lord, have spoken. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, Mark out two roads for the sword of the king of Babylon to take, both starting from the same country. Make a signpost where the road branches off to the city. Mark out one road for the sword to come against Rabbah of the Ammonites and another against Judah and fortify Jerusalem. For the king of Babylon will stop at the fork in the road, at the junction of the two roads, to seek an omen. He will cast lots with arrows. He will consult his idols. He will examine the liver. Into his right hand will come the lot for Jerusalem, where he is to set up battering rams, to give the command to slaughter, to sound the battle cry, to set battering rams against the gates, to build a ramp, and to erect siege works. It will seem like a false omen to those who have sworn allegiance to him, but he will remind them of their guilt and take them captive. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. Because you people have brought to mind your guilt by your open rebellion, revealing your sins and all that you do, because you have done this, you will be taken captive. Oh, profane and wicked prince of Israel, whose day has come, whose time of punishment has reached its climax, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. Take off the turban, remove the crown, it will not be as it was. The lowly will be exalted, and the exalted will be brought low. A ruin, a ruin, I will make it a ruin. It will not be restored until he comes to whom it rightfully belongs. To him I will give it. And you, son of man, prophesy and say, This is what the sovereign Lord says about the Ammonites and their insults. A sword. A sword drawn for the slaughter, polished to consume and to flash like lightning. Despite false visions concerning you and lying divinations about you, it will be laid on the necks of the wicked who are to be slain, whose day has come, whose time of punishment has reached its climax. Return the sword to its scabbard. In the place where you were created, in the land of your ancestry, I will judge you. I will pour out my wrath upon you and breathe out my fiery anger against you. I will hand you over to brutal men, men skilled in destruction. You will be fuel for the fire. Your blood will be shed in your land. You will be remembered no more. For I, the Lord, have spoken. Chapter 22 The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, will you judge her? Will you judge this city of bloodshed? Then confront her 
with all her detestable practices and say, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. O city that brings on herself doom by shedding blood in her midst and defiles herself by making idols, you have become guilty because of the blood you have shed and have become defiled by the idols you have made. You have brought your days to a close and the end of your years has come. Therefore I will make you an object of scorn to the nations and a laughing stock to all the countries. Those who are near and those who are far away will mock you, O infamous city, full of turmoil. See how each of the princes of Israel who are in you uses his power to shed blood. In you they have treated father and mother with contempt. In you they have oppressed the alien and mistreated the fatherless and the widow. You have despised my holy things and desecrated my Sabbaths. In you are slanderous men bent on shedding blood. In you are those who eat at the mountain shrines and commit lewd acts. In you are those who dishonor their father's bed. In you are those who violate women during their period when they are ceremonially unclean. In you, one man commits a detestable offense with his neighbor's wife, another shamefully defiles his daughter-in-law, and another violates his sister, his own father's daughter. In you, men accept bribes to shed blood. You take usury and excessive interest and make unjust gain from your neighbors by extortion, and you have forgotten me declares the Sovereign Lord. I will surely strike my hands together at the unjust gain you have made and at the blood you have shed in your midst. Will your courage endure or your hands be strong in the day I deal with you? I, the Lord, have spoken and I will do it. I will disperse you among the nations and scatter you through the countries and I will put an end to your uncleanness. When you have been defiled in the eyes of the nations, you will know that I am the Lord. Then the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, the house of Israel has become dross to me. All of them are the copper, tin, iron, and lead left inside a furnace. They are but the dross of silver. Therefore, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Because you have all become dross, I will gather you into Jerusalem. As men gather silver, copper, iron, lead, and tin into a furnace to melt it with a fiery blast, so will I gather you in my anger and my wrath and put you inside the city and melt you. I will gather you, and I will blow on you with my fiery wrath, and you will be melted inside her. As silver is melted in a furnace, so you will be melted inside her, and you will know that I, the Lord, have poured out my wrath upon you. Again the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, say to the land, You are a land that has had no rain or showers in the day of wrath. There is a conspiracy of her princes within her, like a roaring lion tearing its prey. They devour people take treasures and precious things and make many widows within her. Her priests do violence to my law and profane my holy things. They do not distinguish between the holy and the common. They teach that there is no difference between the unclean and the clean, and they shut their eyes to the keeping of my Sabbaths so that I am profaned among them. Her officials within her are like wolves tearing their prey. They shed blood and kill people to make unjust gain. Her prophets whitewash these deeds for them by false visions and lying divinations. They say, this is what the sovereign Lord says when the Lord has not spoken. The people of the land practice extortion and commit robbery. They oppress the poor and needy and mistreat the alien, denying them justice. I looked for a man among them who would build up the wall and stand before me in the gap on behalf of the land so I would not have to destroy it. But I found none. So I will pour out my wrath on them and consume them with my fiery anger, bringing down on their own heads all they have done, declares the Sovereign Lord. Chapter 23 The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, there were two women, daughters of the same mother. They became prostitutes in Egypt, engaging in prostitution from their youth. 
In that land their breasts were fondled and their virgin bosoms caressed. The older was named Ohola, and her sister was Oholaba. They were mine and gave birth to sons and daughters. Ohola is Samaria, and Oholaba is Jerusalem. Ohola engaged in prostitution while she was still mine, and she lusted after her lovers, the Assyrians, warriors clothed in blue, governors and commanders, all of them handsome young men and mounted horsemen. She gave herself as a prostitute to all the elite of the Assyrians and defiled herself with all the idols of everyone she lusted after. She did not give up the prostitution she began in Egypt when during her youth men slept with her, caressed her virgin bosom, and poured out their lust upon her. Therefore I handed her over to her lovers, the Assyrians for whom she lusted. They stripped her naked, took away her sons and daughters, and killed her with the sword. She became a byword among women, and punishment was inflicted on her. Her sister, Oholaba, saw this, yet in her lust and prostitution she was more depraved than her sister. She too lusted after the Assyrians, governors and commanders, warriors in full dress, mounted horsemen, all handsome young men. I saw that she too defiled herself, both of them went the same way. But she carried her prostitution still further. She saw men portrayed on a wall, figures of Chaldeans portrayed in red, with belts around their waists and flowing turbans on their heads. All of them looked like Babylonian chariot officers, natives of Chaldea. As soon as she saw them, she lusted after them and sent messengers to them in Chaldea. Then the Babylonians came to her to the bed of love, and in their lust they defiled her. After she had been defiled by them, she turned away from them in disgust. When she carried on her prostitution openly and exposed her nakedness, I turned away from her in disgust, just as I had turned away from her sister. Yet she became more and more promiscuous as she recalled the days of her youth when she was a prostitute in Egypt. There. She lusted after her lovers, whose genitals were like those of donkeys, and whose emission was like that of horses. So you longed for the lewdness of your youth, when in Egypt your bosom was caressed, and your young breasts fondled? Therefore, O Holoba, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. I will stir up your lovers against you, those you turned away from in disgust, and I will bring them against you from every side, the Babylonians and the Chaldeans, the men of Picard and Shoah and Koah and all the Assyrians with them, handsome young men, all of them governors and commanders, chariot officers and men of high rank, all mounted on horses. They will come against you with weapons, chariots and wagons and with a throng of people. They will take up positions against you on every side with large and small shields and with helmets. I will turn you over to them for punishment, and they will punish you according to their standards. I will direct my jealous anger against you, and they will deal with you in fury. They will cut off your noses and your ears, and those of you who are left will fall by the sword. They will take away your sons and daughters, and those of you who are left will be consumed by fire. They will also strip you of your clothes and take your fine jewelry. So I will put a stop to the lewdness and prostitution you began in Egypt. You will not look on these things with longing or remember Egypt any more. For this is what the Sovereign Lord says. I am about to hand you over to those you hate, to those you turned away from in disgust. They will deal with you in hatred and take away everything you have worked for. They will leave you naked and bear, and the shame of your prostitution will be exposed. Your lewdness and promiscuity have brought this upon you because you lusted after the nations and defiled yourself with their idols. You have gone the way of your sister, so I will put her cup into your hand. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. You will drink your sister's cup, a cup large and deep. It will bring scorn and derision, for it holds so much. You will be filled with drunkenness and sorrow, the cup of ruin and desolation, the cup of your sister Samaria. You will drink it and
and drain it dry, you will dash it to pieces and tear your breasts. I have spoken, declares the Sovereign Lord. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. Since you have forgotten me and thrust me behind your back, you must bear the consequences of your lewdness and prostitution. The Lord said to me, Son of man, will you judge Ohola and Oholaba? Then confront them with their detestable practices, for they have committed adultery, and blood is on their hands. They committed adultery with their idols. They even sacrificed their children, whom they bore to me as food for them. They have also done this to me. At that same time, they defiled my sanctuary and desecrated my Sabbaths. On the very day they sacrificed their children to their idols, they entered my sanctuary and desecrated it. That is what they did in my house. They even sent messengers for men who came from far away, and when they arrived you bathed yourself for them, painted your eyes, and put on your jewelry. You sat on an elegant couch with a table spread before it on which you had placed the incense and oil that belonged to me. The noise of a carefree crowd was around her. Sabaeans were brought from the desert along with men from the rabble, and they put bracelets on the arms of the woman and her sister and beautiful crowns on their heads. Then I said about the one worn out by adultery, Now let them use her as a prostitute, for that is all she is. And they slept with her. As men sleep with a prostitute, so they slept with those lewd women. Ohola and Oholaba. But righteous men will sentence them to the punishment of women who commit adultery and shed blood, because they are adulterous, and blood is on their hands. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Bring a mob against them and give them over to terror and plunder. The mob will stone them and cut them down with their swords. They will kill their sons and daughters and burn down their houses. So I will put an end to lewdness in the land, that all women may take warning and not imitate you. You will suffer the penalty for your lewdness, and bear the consequences of your sins of idolatry. Then you will know that I am the Sovereign Lord. Chapter 24 In the ninth year, in the tenth month, on the tenth day, the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, record this date, this very day, because the king of Babylon has laid siege to Jerusalem this very day. Tell this rebellious house a parable, and say to them, This is what the sovereign Lord says. Put on the cooking pot, put it on and pour water into it. Put into it the pieces of meat, all the choice pieces, the leg and the shoulder. Fill it with the best of these bones, take the pick of the flock. Pile wood beneath it for the bones, bring it to a boil and cook the bones in it. For this is what the Sovereign Lord says. Woe to the city of bloodshed, to the pot now encrusted, whose deposit will not go away. Empty it piece by piece without casting lots for them. For the blood she shed is in her midst. She poured it on the bare rock. She did not pour it on the ground where the dust would cover it. To stir up wrath and take revenge, I put her blood on the bare rock so that it would not be covered. Therefore, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Woe to the city of bloodshed. I too will pile the wood high, so heap on the wood and kindle the fire. Cook the meat well, mixing in the spices, and let the bones be charred. Then set the empty pot on the coals till it becomes hot, and its copper glows so its impurities may be melted and its deposit burned away. It has frustrated all efforts. Its heavy deposit has not been removed, not even by fire. Now your impurity is lewdness. Because I tried to cleanse you, but you would not be cleansed from your impurity, you will not be clean again until my wrath against you has subsided. I, the Lord, have spoken. The time has come for me to act. I will not hold back. I will not have pity, nor will I relent. You will be judged according to your conduct and your actions, declares the Sovereign Lord. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, with one blow 
I am about to take away from you the delight of your eyes. Yet, do not lament, or weep, or shed any tears. Groan quietly. Do not mourn for the dead. Keep your turban fastened and your sandals on your feet. Do not cover the lower part of your face or eat the customary food of mourners. So I spoke to the people in the morning, and in the evening my wife died. The next morning I did as I had been commanded. Then the people asked me, Won't you tell us what these things have to do with us? So I said to them, The word of the Lord came to me. Say to the house of Israel, This is what the sovereign Lord says. I am about to desecrate my sanctuary, the stronghold in which you take pride, the delight of your eyes, the object of your affection. The sons and daughters you left behind will fall by the sword, and you will do as I have done. You will not cover the lower part of your face or eat the customary food of mourners. You will keep your turbans on your heads and your sandals on your feet. You will not mourn or weep, but will waste away because of your sins and groan among yourselves. Ezekiel will be assigned to you. You will do just as he has done. When this happens, you will know that I am the Sovereign Lord. And you, son of man, on the day I take away their stronghold, their joy, and glory, the delight of their eyes, their hearts, desire, and their sons and daughters as well. On that day a fugitive will come to tell you the news. At that time your mouth will be opened, you will speak with him and will no longer be silent. So you will be assigned to them and they will know that I am the Lord. <laughs>